Welcome to the Vitra Design Museum. Clara and I will give you an exhibition tour of the show, German Design 1949 to 1989, Two Countries, One History. The exhibition is broken down into four chapters. First, we give an introduction to the topic of German design in the divided country, followed by three chronological chapters. We look forward to showing you around. The first space of the exhibition seeks to offer visitors a historical context for visitors for the period between 1949 and 1989, and also to introduce them to the shared German design narrative for the same period of German division, which was 40 years long. In 1949, the Federal Republic of Germany in the West and the German Democratic Republic in the East were founded within months of each other. After a period of reconstruction, the first task was to, to create two nations from one, and design was to play a vital role in this undertaking. The exhibition exhibits various objects from everyday life, which were very symbolic for this new undertaking, including currency, personal IDs, or state emblems. Although divided, both countries were still connected not only by language and history, but also through design and material culture. So in this part of the room, we present some object pairings which show the shared uh, modernist tradition of uh, Bauhaus and uh, Bergbund or the relations in export. The Garden Egg Chair is a very interesting example of mutual relations uh, of both countries. It was designed by the Hungarian designer Peter Gizzi in West Germany, but finally produced in the East, so it is widely considered as an East German product. While Germany was reunified in 1990, the process of the reunification was not yet completed. For a long time, the dominant opinion was that in the GDR, and no independent aesthetic culture is possible due to the communist state structure. So the design culture of the Federal Republic was considered superior. In this exhibition, we want to show that the East German design was not inferior to that of the West. The Simpson S51 was uh, one of the GDR's most successful products. With its design, Karl Klaus Dietl um, introduced the so-called Offenness Principe, uh, open principle, where each structural element uh, was clearly defined like the gas tank, uh, the motor or the seat. By this principle, each element uh, could be replaced or repaired or refurbished. Uh, so this was uh, very practical and until now uh, this design is very popular in East Germany of course and also in West Germany. So, the second room of the exhibition is dedicated to the period between 1949 and 1960 and covers the reconstruction era of Germany post-World War II. The first part of the room shows images of Germany post-World War II and the destruction that ensued. Millions of people were without homes and food and shelter were in short supply. But then the exhibition opens up to show the objects that de designers created and also the connections of the modernist shared heritage of before the war. Um, the dedication to opening new institutions towards design, but also design companies and design schools is also a highlight of this room. After the Second World War, designers from uh, the Bauhaus and uh, the Werkbund uh, were important uh, in rebuilding design schools in the West and in the East. While Max Bill succeeded uh, in West Germany in uh, establishing uh, the HFG Ulm as the legitimate successor of uh, the Bauhaus, 
There were several attempts in East Germany to revive the Bauhaus tradition, um, but they failed uh, due to the rejection of the Bauhaus ideas. But anyway, uh, the tradition passed by, was passed by the teachers, uh, like Mart Stamm at the Kunsthochschule Weißensee, or Erich Engelmann um, at, from the important design school Burg Ibichenstein in Halle. Uh, all these design schools were very important uh, in the production of uh, the 1950s. We show some examples here in the exhibition. In the 1950s, both Germanys organized various exhibitions dedicated to teaching the public about good taste, but they also participated in exhibitions around the world as a means to repair their image to the rest of the, the world. And two of the exhibits that, the, um, that this exhibition highlights are the 1958 World's Fair in Brussels, which was a very big event for West Germany because it was the first time it participated in the World's Fair since the Third Reich. Um, another uh, exhibition that we present is actually the Leipzig um, Trade Fair, which was a trade fair that occurred twice a year and was the occasion that it presented itself and its goods to the rest of the world. So these two occasions were the moment when both Germanys were able to repair their image on the world stage. One of my favorite exhibits in the show is the 1958 uh, Expo uh, rug designed by the West German designer Margaret Hildebrand for the occasion of the World's Fair in Brussels in the German pavilion. But we have many other exhibits on show in this space from the 1950s that show an attention to traditional materials such as the 602 model by Franz Ehrlich, which was designed for the Deutsche Werkstatt in Hellerau in the eastern part of Germany, but also an, atti an attention to experimentation with new materials, such as the case with the um, plexiglass cover of the so-called Snow White's coffin by Dieter Rams for the West German company Brown in 1956. These are only a few of the many exhibits on display in this room of the exhibition. And we look forward to showing you more when you're here at the museum. The third space of the exhibition covers the period between 1961, culminating in the construction of the Berlin Wall, and until 1972 with the Olympic Games in Munich. This space of the exhibition is divided into three sections, the east, the west, and a middle section with exhibits from both Germanys of this period. Through this, the visitor must choose sides. Will they go to the west or the east? They can see to the other side, but they can't actually quite reach the exhibits there. Through this, the exhibition ar architecture evokes the divide in Germany begun with the uh, construction of the Berlin Wall in 1961. In the 1950s, the official policy of uh, the GDR was rejective to Bauhaus and functionalism, seeing them as Western and capitalist. But in the 1960s, the shift towards the functional style could no longer be prevented. Um, the government understood the benefits of the industrial mass production. The newfound appreciation for functionalism was expressed in elegant buildings such as the restaurant Moscow, for example. The iconic restaurant was built in the early 1960s in East Berlin. We are happy to show some furniture sketches which the Vitra Design Museum owns. The roof is crowned by letters designed by Klaus Bittkugel, one of the most important graphic designers of the GDR. The stainless steel tableware objects are examples for the industrial production of that time. Designers on both sides of the Berlin Wall were inspired by the international space race of the 1960s. Colorful forms and futuristic forms were also made possible by plastic innovations in this era. The exhibition shows some iconic examples, including the work by, work by Luigi Colani from West Germany or work by Karl Klaus Dietl from East Germany. It also gives insights into the reflections on pop culture on both sides of the wall, as well as Germany's intention of becoming a leader in exports in the East and in the West. In West Germany in the 1960s, designers received large international commissions and design became synonymous with corporate culture. For example, one of the most well-known graphic designers in West Germany was Otto Eicher. 
Eicher had co-founded the Ulm School of Design in the 1950s and in the 1960s had worked on commissions for companies such as Lufthansa. In the late 60s, his team was commissioned to create a corporate identity concept for the Olympic Games in Munich in 1972. This was a momentous occasion for Germany and it was an exciting way to end this era. The final room of the exhibition covers the period between 1973 with the international oil crisis until 1989 with the fall of the Berlin Wall. The room explores various alternative approaches to design in the 1970s, for example, with the do-it-yourself movement or sustainability, and covers also topics like anti-functionalist experimentation and digitization up until the 80s. The room concludes with 1989 with the fall of the Berlin Wall. Inaugurated in 1976, the Palace of the Republic in East Berlin was the representative seat of the Parliament of the GDR. But in the perception of many citizens, it was foremost uh, a meeting place. Uh, people came for restaurant visits, for concerts, uh, dance events or art exhibitions. In addition, the Palace of the Republic was a huge design project and a result of intensive teamwork of engineers, architects and designers headed by the leading architect Heid Garfanda. The lighting system, for example, enabled a variable illumination of the huge spaces of the building. In the 1970s, there was a shift in thinking in design and its goals. For example, in West Germany, Designers critically reflected on surplus and consumerist practices by creating objects that were made of recycled materials or which encouraged people to make their own products, so do-it-yourself strategies. Uh, in the East, on the other hand, there was a critical lack of resources and this led designers to create long-lasting and well-designed products that wouldn't break and were replaceable in case that they did. The lack of material uh, was omnipresent in the GDR in the 1980s. The fashion designer Augusta Pole creatively turned these shortcomings into her individual style. She used production form material for rainwear and created a very innovative and successful collection. The provocative and edgy one-offs designed by the protagonist of Neues Deutsches Design or New German Design in the 1980s were highly influential for more mainstream objects that were produced by German industrial designers inside and outside of the country. This was also an era where PC and hardware design became a more active part of the designer's daily life and this is a change in the profession that has come to shape the way that we see it still today. Two Countries, One History is the central theme of this exhibition because it's the first comprehensive exhibition to give an overview of not only the differences between design in divided Germany, but also the parallels. We hope to see you soon. Bye.